I'm delighted to introduce today's presenter, Matt Lewis, Product Manager of Indirect Tax at Tax Systems. Matt oversees the development of the Alpha Bank Compliance Solution. Prior to this, he advised international businesses on how best to manage indirect tax, assessing their complex business structures and supply chains. This has provided him with first-hand insight into the challenges associated with the digitalization of VAT. Matt is also a valued member of the ICAW MDD Software Advisory Group. And the outline time for today are as follows. After this brief introduction, Matt will speak for around 40 minutes, and we'll then have about 10 minutes of questions at the end. So, Matt, over to you. Well, thank you very much, Richard, and welcome, everybody. I hope everyone is keeping safe um, and doing well. Um, and thank you for dialing in uh, to listen to this. Um, we've got a few things to cover off, or I'm hoping to cover off. Um, obviously, no uh, presentation uh, this time is uh, without the mention of COVID-19. Um, so we're going to run through and see how that is shaping uh, what we see as the future of tax technology, uh, as well as looking at uh, MTD, uh, the, the deferment that's been granted, uh, albeit very brief, uh, and go on to have a look at um, what we can do uh, with it and potential uh, solutions to, to make us compliant. Um, so what's going on? Uh, this crisis is not something many of us could have predicted uh, even a few months ago. Um, the effects on business and the wider economy are still evolving uh, the longer it goes on. Um, we're all having to adapt to a different normal um, and with the lockdown uh, going on well into the autumn in one shape, form or another and potentially longer. The predictions that we've got on screen here and the effect on, on the economy are still very much unknown. Uh, and still very much a, a guess at this stage. Um, it's a global problem, uh, but for, from the UK point of view, um, we are going to see an uptick in unemployment. Um, we are going to see a fall in uh, the GDP, uh, which is predicted to be an, uh, an alarming fall, uh, certainly in the short term. Um, and public borrowing is going to be uh, going up uh, to pay for some of the relief packages that the government put in place. Um, what we're hearing from businesses is that they are aggressively protecting their cash flows, uh, quite understandably, um, looking to spend only where absolutely necessary or where it provides additional value. But what does this mean for HMRC? Well, the effects of this current crisis are likely to eclipse the, uh, those that we uh, had in the financial crisis um, and the pressures on our tax collectors uh, are going to be uh, ramped up enormously. HMRC had already announced before uh, the current crisis that they were going to ramp up their compliance resources. Um, and introduce new technologies to better target those that are abusing the tax system uh, or not paying. Um, that is still very much on the cards as far as we know. Um, they'd already announced uh, uh, that um, or the investment in technology uh, was going to increase because they've always had an issue about collecting the amount that they are due. Um, as we can see from there, the slide, there's always been a shortfall in collection as, as opposed to what's been declared. Um, and the pressure on them now will be to make sure they collect every penny. Making tax digital was one of the tools that they introduced uh, over a period of time was expected to increase the tax take uh, in making sure that uh, mistakes and errors were minimized um, and particularly to turn take out uh, the human element uh, within the tax return process or VAT return process uh, to try and minimise errors. And HMRC's ambition is to be one of the most digitally advanced tax authorities in the world. Um, I think that's shared with many other tax authorities. Um, 
And whilst the business, have, we're grappling with the initial stages of MTD, they are continuing to boost their own internal systems. And I'm sure we can expect far more soon. Um, and although we've been granted a little bit of extra time to comply with the initial stages of MTD for VAT, um, HMRC were very bullish about their expectations on compliance uh, with the process before uh, the current extension. Uh, and I'm guessing they'll be even more so as we come out. Um, so I'm not expecting uh, any extra <coughs> soft landing periods uh, to be introduced. Um, and the, the compliance is expected. And then HMRC will continue to use the penalty regimes as a key element in their toolkit to encourage compliance. Um, some of the cynics amongst us may also say that they might use it to boost uh, some revenue in some cases. Um, but the penalty regime is an important tool for them uh, to make sure that pe people are complying. So before the lockdown, we conducted a number of surveys um, in conjunction with Taxation Magazine and Accountancy Age to get businesses' view on MTD and how they're preparing for the imminent digital links requirements, as well as how this fit into the broader tax technology plans that they might have. And some of the insights that we've got here, um, it was clear that finance teams, tax teams are spending a considerable amount of time on their back compliance. Nearly 60% of the wide range of businesses that were surveyed were spending more than 25 days in pulling together their back returns. And a significant proportion, 20%, were spending more than 50 days. And a lot of that time was spent on data collection. There's a strong belief, there was a strong belief uh, that automation could improve things uh, and reduce errors. With COVID and the pressures on budgets, doing more with less is going to be far more relevant and automation can be a key way of increasing that efficiency, giving more time for businesses to concentrate on the value added tasks. Um, there was a, a desire with nearly half of the people surveyed uh, trying to use uh, MTD as a uh, as a wider excuse almost uh, to actually do more um, with their automation processes. But many had concerns of what they had in place to comply with the immediate digital links requirements. 74% of those planned on just relying on what they had in place for the first stage of MTD, which is the submission of the back returns through um, HMRC's API, had concerns over whether or not that would be good enough to comply with the digital links element of the regulations. And then some had far bigger plans uh, on where automation could bet their business and were already looking to the future. Um, some 30% were already looking to put in place solutions that would help them with the, f the future MTD requirements for other taxes that are on the horizon. And whilst we don't have any details of those, there was a wider ambition um, also to automate uh, the tax function in the medium term to take people away from the sort of compliance day-to-day -day time uh, to redirect their efforts onto other areas of the business or more value-added processes. So I'm going to move on to spreadsheets just uh, briefly. Um, there's been a lot of talk about spreadsheets in the market and uh, the reliance placed on them and also the associated risks uh, that uh, they present, which is not unfounded, but they are here to stay. They are a great, it's a great tool um, and correctly used is incredibly powerful, um, but they need to be used in the right places. VAT is becoming a business critical element and is likely to become more so given that where we are and the increased pressures on the exchequer. HMRC has long had the uh, ambition to ensure that VAT is something that belongs in the boardroom and a recent survey by EY seems to suggest they're getting their way um, with some 75% of businesses discussing it at that level. Spreadsheets are easy to use and with little knowledge everyone can use them. APIs can be added to pass data from them and to them. Uh, so what are the issues? Well, the issues are in, their, in, in its strengths. Um, they're well known, they're easy to use, the manipulation of data uh, is, is very easy and useful, 
but that in itself is one of its main weaknesses <clears throat> um, because it's very difficult to capture changes and uh, with a, an audit trail as to where those have been made. Complex spreadsheets tend to be known by very few within an organization and can be very difficult for someone else to pick up and use. And it can also be very time consuming to check and review to ensure they're providing the correct results every time. A recent taxation survey uh, stated that 65% uh, of organizations uh, had concerns over the accuracy of their spreadsheets. And these are broken down into you know, uh, a few areas that we should all know about. Um, the key one being you know, broken formulas and links between worksheets and files where something has changed uh, in the data set uh, along the way uh, and and then it's using those formulas and uh, links, applying them to the wrong cells. But there's other things like tracking the errors and uh, just manual input er errors uh, was a large one there as well. Um, and then the management of this sheer number of spreadsheets that are used within organizations. What was happening before the lockdown was we were seeing businesses with a desire to introduce far more automation into their processes. But due to the timescales and pressures imposed, pressures imposed by MTD, they're having to do the minimum to comply. Now we're actually seeing uh, businesses thinking about um, ramping up their automation processes, um, particularly with um, the new way and the new normal and with more and more remote working um, that has the potential to continue long after um, the, the current lockdown regimes. So what do HMRC think? Well, HMRC have long used risk as a way of determining who should get their attention when it comes to compliance and audit activity. Like everyone else, they need to direct their resources in the right way and use them as effectively as possible, making sure that they get the right amount of that at the right time. Typically, they use a number of factors in determining the particular risk of a, an organization. Um, these would include yeah, compliance history, Obviously, um, if it's not good, you're likely to get far more attention. Um, but other factors come into play, such as your uh, business complexity, your organizational structure, how many VAT groups you have, what, what does that look like, um, how much international um, organizations do you have within it. Um, but there are also things like the complexity of your actual business activities from a VAT point of view. So typically, if you're having to use complex VAT regimes, um, they're likely to uh, place a, a greater emphasis on the risk uh, of organization and therefore require more checks. Um, uh, but also they look at who is doing the VAT returns in the business, uh, how much specialist VAT knowledge you may have within there and how seriously in their perception businesses take the compliance. But they've always taken into account as well as all of that, um, the systems and processes used within the organization to produce their VAT returns. Now, typically, when you get a visit from HMRC, um, they'll first focus on uh, your business, your activities, and they'll walk through and un try and understand your business in more detail. Um, but they'll also then want to be walked through how you get to produce your VAT returns, what systems and processes you use, um, and in all of that, they're looking for the risks involved, the, the potential pitfalls that we might fall into whilst putting together our VAT returns um, to determine where they're going to focus their time during their audit. Um, they've built up a considerable knowledge over the years of the systems and processes people use uh, to compile their VAT returns. And in my experience, they're pretty good at targeting uh, their efforts in the right place. So before we go, uh, move on further, I thought I'd ask everyone a question, um, which is, should come up on your screen. So in your opinion, will the current crisis, COVID uh, and the lockdown accelerate the digitization of tax processes uh, in the next year or so, or, or not? And if, uh, We'll see uh, whether we've got some answers very shortly. I'll just give you a little bit of time to uh, click on the button. 
and hopefully people's Wi-Fi is working uh, as well as mine uh, at the moment. Okay, let's have a look at some answers. Not unsurprisingly, um, there, there's, there's a mixture. Um, for, for those that think it will, that's absolutely marvellous. Um, and for those that don't, uh, you know, I'm guessing there's, there's other things that we need to be worrying about um, because the time limits we have are still very tight. But uh, that's great. Thanks for answering that. So we've talked about what's happening in the market, um, but I just want to take a little bit of a step back for a moment uh, to talk a little about uh, what MTD uh, for VAT is all about. Um, it was a major focus for a number of businesses up until recently, but understandably, given where we are, uh, that may have pushed the focus back a bit. Um, but it's still there um, and it's still important. So let's remind ourselves what it's all about. Well, VAT has been a self-assessed tax. It's been completely reliant on businesses giving summary data of the nine boxes on the VAT return if you need to fill them out. Um, but you know, mostly it's four. Um, and uh, it's reliant on HMRC reliant on you getting it right. Um, the challenge for them has always been ensuring that what has been declared is the right amount of VAT that they are due. But there's a tax gap. Um, in 2018, uh, when MTD was all being uh, kicked off and thought about, um, that was estimated at about £35 billion, and £9 billion of that related to VAT. Uh, and in HMRC's opinion, six, nearly £6.5 billion, they attributed to people to not taking reasonable care uh, in putting together their um, VAT returns. And largely, they, they put that down to a lot about manual errors uh, and transposition errors and spreadsheets and, and so on. You know, in the past 10, 20 years almost, we've been heard a lot about avoidance and evasion and all the measures they're uh, taking in there. And the VAT gap was all about people abusing the system. And actually, you know, a large proportion of the money they're looking to collect is because... Uh, and then again, in their opinion, the people were not taking the appropriate care over their VAT affairs and declaring the right amount of, of VAT. So, what have they introduced? Um, they've uh, see MTD as a key driver in taking a big step forward to reduce this VAT gap, uh, taking as much of the human effort out of the VAT return process as possible to reduce the risk of human error. Now, this is not going to happen overnight, and so. They, uh, I'm not going to go over the, the, the full details of, of MTD and where we are at the moment because I think we all heard an awful lot about of it over the last couple of years, but it's, always, it's worth just recapping what actually is required. So the first stage, um, HMRC have identified three goals, um, the f first of which, which is they to mandate that every business keeps digital records. Now. That's uh, that. That's fine. Um, and the first stage that they've actually introduced is number three in the list of things they wanted to achieve, which is submitting VAT returns via the new API transfer of data, uh, rather than their old antiquated uh, portal uh, that they were using. Um, and the stage we're in at the moment, uh, the one we need to comply with next is proving that we have digital links between uh, the various bits of software, various finance packages and tools that we use to, to put together our VAT return. Now, for most businesses, or for a large portion of businesses, that requirement was in place for April this year. And obviously, there's a deferred element of businesses that were due to comply in October. Um, so what's what's happened? Well, quite understandably, uh, when we first went into the lockdown situation, uh, HMRC came out and uh, said announced that we could have a delay to when we need to comply with this particular requirement. Uh, for some of us, uh, it was you know it's given a, a year extra, 
um, and for the deferred amount of another six months, uh, because every business, VAT registered business trading above the VAT threshold uh, has to comply with the digital links by April 2021. But uh, in true HMRC fashion, um, the delay came with some caveats uh, and some expectations. Um, and so they have stated that the, whilst there is a delay, businesses should make the most uh, of the extra time. Um, and to, to quote some of the things they've said, um, they're to ensure that administration and processes are ready for their business ramping up again uh, and for future requirements. Um, they want to make sure that we, to ensure that digital links are in place, making it clear that they expect compliance. Now, I, I, from my discussions with HMRC before uh, the, the, the current crisis, they were very bullish about their expectations on digital links, um, and, and they, ex they expected businesses to be to comply, and that, that you know, in their view, there was plenty of software about to to make sure that data can go from one place to another electronically and um, without human intervention. Um, and so they were pretty adamant that there is the compliance was expected um, along, along this way. And I suspect that now that that's uh, going to be even more the case. Um, they see MTD and the digital links as a key element to reduce the potential mistakes that businesses are making in their VAT returns. Um, and they want to make sure that uh, the, the, we introduce the right technology within our businesses um, to improve the effectiveness uh, and to minimize our, the errors. Um, they even suggested uh, that MTD should be used to drive profits and growth uh, through efficiency gains that technology can bring. So in my view, uh, in my view, overall, the delay is a good thing. Uh, initially, it takes the pressure off the immediate issues facing businesses in the current crisis. It gives more time, or albeit a short one, to look at how MTD can give us the opportunity to look at overall processes and see how it can be used to address the broader challenges around our accuracy and efficiency in our back return processes, rather than just doing the minimum to comply. The industry is evolving, and we, as a software provider, are not where we want to be. So another major plus to the delay is it gives the software industry the opportunity to add functionality into their solutions to add more value to businesses, going beyond MTD and automating more <clears throat> of their processes, including solutions for validating the integrity of data, providing insights and automating complex and time-consuming processes and calculations, such as partial exemption. But the accelerator pedal has not been lifted by much. The government is going to need a plan to pay for this increased public borrowing. And so whilst MTD is already predicted to increase revenues for HMRC over a period of time, we need to expect more. Uh, I heard last week that April's public borrowing uh, was up at 6.2 billion just for the month. Um, so the, the current predictions of around three, 300, three to 400 billion when we come out of this are, are looking a little bit light at the moment. But so said the economic impact is still very much an evolving beast, depending on how long this crisis goes on for, how businesses can adapt, uh, and when we can, we can get back to some kind of So moving on to, um, to what's required for April 2021, I thought it would be useful to have a look at uh, what HMR's de definition of a digital link actually is. Um, so you can see that up on your screen. But essentially, it's the exchange of information between software products that make up your financial and VAT systems in the business without manual intervention and manipulation and with a digitally recorded audit trail. So whilst API spreadsheets um, are compliant with the current requirements for submitting our VAT returns, I suspect that the vast majority of them will not be 
compliant with the for the purposes of digital links without a considerable amount of additional work to ensure that they're in place. But of course, for addressing the digital links, we need some digital records, um, which is essentially a finance system, although HMRC have conceded that a well-built spreadsheet could constitute a digital software system, uh, as a spreadsheet in is, is in itself a software product. Um, but I'm sure that most businesses um, have a dedicated ERP or finance system uh, in place. Um, there's nothing unusual within the, the requirements of what needs to be kept in digital records from a VAT point of view. Uh, HMRC stipulate you must have your permanent data, such as your business name, the address, registration number, or so, so on, uh, recorded uh, within the digital format. Um, and obviously, every transaction uh, that's going through the business and associated with that uh, must be contained within the, the digital record as well as your mandatory VAT account, which has always been requirement, but it now must be purely in a digital format. Um, and they, they go on to say they must capture things like um, your reverse charge uh, requirements. So for where you're buying services in from overseas, um, those transactions need to be recorded digitally um, uh, as well. So what's the timelines? So every period every that period starting 1st of april onwards uh, needs to comply with the digital links regime uh, hmrc have expected that we should have been working on these digital links since uh, we started using uh, the api uh, submission uh, regime um, and so from the 1st of april they expect us to have full digital links in place between our source data that we use to comp to start our VAT return all the way through to the submission uh, to, their, to them. So the first people affected, obviously, those on monthly returns. Um, they'll be making their first submissions at the end of May. Um, perhaps if they get, get a seven-day extension, it'll be the beginning uh, of the next month. Um, but for the vast, the big bulk of the first wave uh, will be those on calendar quarters uh, VAT returns. So the first submissions that HMRC will be expecting uh, to be in full compliance will be going in the end of July uh, and so on. And so everyone, uh, bar those exempted, will um, be have their first, at least submitted their first return um, by the end of September, early October. So what shouldn't we do? Um, when it comes to digital links, uh, the one thing that's stipulated uh, across all the guidance is um, it's no longer acceptable to copy and paste our data. Um, so in an ideal world, uh, we would run our VAT reports from our finance systems. Uh, we'd go down to the bottom of the report, take our totals and transport those digitally straight into uh, a VAT return. Uh, uh, and send that off. However, we all know in the real world um, that that's very rarely the case. Um, and so we tend to uh, build up our VAT returns using uh, spreadsheets um, and some of that data needs to be amended or changes made. Um, and quite often we get into the habit of you know, either copy and pasting the results of the reports into somewhere else to, to, to work on um, or between worksheets within a spreadsheet to build up that VAT return. This is no longer something that we're able to do and maintain compliance with digital links. Every movement of that data from reports to spreadsheets to worksheets to any piece of software that we're going to use to do our VAT return needs to be done digitally. Uh, an electronic basis. Um, we need to be careful um, about our spreadsheets and, and what we use. Um, we need to make sure that uh, our links uh, to, to sales, our links between worksheets um, and, and files are, are still in place and producing the correct result. Um, because if they break, um, then we're no longer uh, compliant with the digital links. One of the areas 
where you know digital links can be maintained is if we send our data via email, uh, either in between departments within our business or individuals, uh, or even to advisors, uh, or even transferring that data on a portable device um, is is acceptable in maintaining a digital link. However, as we've seen in, in, in press with these things going missing, uh, or if you've ever received a file over email, you know that sometimes they can uh, get corrupted along the way. Um, the links are broken. Uh, we haven't got all the files that we need that make up that particular file to, to maintain those links. And so that we run the risk of breaking the digital links again if we have to reconstruct or manipulate what we've received uh, in order to, to do the next stage of that return process. And obviously, the use of spreadsheets without um, links uh, and not being able to bring through data from one place to another uh, without typing it in or copying and pasting it, uh, it falls foul immediately of the digital links. And so we need to make sure that any of the spreadsheets that we use have those in place and are checked uh, to make sure that they're working for every every VAT return. So what are the other things we should look out for? Um, in all our research, one of the biggest concerns stated by business was around the amendments and adjustments that they need to make during the VAT return process. And again, part of the guidance um, is that the amendments and adjustments are, in, uh, of course, you know, need to be made. Um, but we are allowed to calculate and evidence those amendments outside of an MTD solution. So, for example, if we've got to calculate some bad debt relief, perhaps, or uh, a past exemption calculation to, to determine what we can recover, we're allowed to do the calculations outside of a closed MTD solution. Uh, and just bring the results of that calculation into the solution digitally um, and, and then pro process through to the, the final submission of the VAT return. However, um, that comes with its own risks and HMRC even go on to say that, um, that it would be far more preferable to be able to do elements and adjustments within the protective environment of an MTD uh, enabled solution um, that contains the, the digital links um, to reduce the risk of potential errors. Um, the other area uh, that we saw on our survey results is that businesses spend most of their time, uh, some 75% in our survey, uh, of the compliance effort on data collection. And it can be complex. Uh, it can be in different formats, from different systems, from uh, third parties even. Um, but the important thing to note here in all cases, the transfer of that data to the functional software that you're using to do the VAT return needs to be a digital movement rather than copy and pasting or um, uh, manually typing in the, the, the numbers that you need. Um, And you know, cons the th simple things, simple things uh, like consolidating VAT groups, for example, um, that historically may have just been uh, typing in the numbers from from different part different entities within the organisation uh, into the final submission spreadsheet. Uh, again, that now needs to be a, have a digital link to bring those numbers through, um, rather than uh, any manual intervention. Um, we need to be careful on spreadsheets uh, and our reliance on them. 88% um, you know, of spreadsheets have been known to contain some kind of error. Now, that might not necessarily mean that you're declaring the wrong amount, um, but they are a known risk, um, and certainly to, to, to HMRC, um, and the reliance on them needs to be carefully monitored. Um, as we've already mentioned, links broken formulas um, and, and formulas applying to the wrong cells uh, are, are an issue. Um, checking is, is key uh, and tracking amendments to the source data 
uh, is sometimes very, very difficult um, without specialist software. Uh, you know, I'm personally aware that um, that's something that HMRC have in their toolkit, um, having uh, submitted some complex uh, spreadsheets, uh, disclosures to HMRC in the past. Uh, the one thing that they have done is run software across them to, to ensure that the links and formulas and sales all work. Um, and so it can be a very time-consuming, laborious task in making sure that your spreadsheet works every VAT return, uh, rather than spending time on understanding whether or not the underlying transactions are uh, in, been treated correctly. We tend to spend more time on making sure our spreadsheets work. Um, and, and there is a it's a known source of risk for HMRC, um, and has been known to increase their perception of risk on on businesses. Um, other things that we know about is, is the, the complex spreadsheets are managed, tend to be managed by a few individuals within an organization. Um, checking, amending and maintain, be, maintaining them becomes reliant on those key individuals uh, and it can be very time consuming and very difficult for other people in the business to pick up and, and, and use them. So what else should we look out for? Um, <clears throat> I say the grand title of HMRC. Um, HMRC obviously are making no secret of the fact they want to become uh, very much more digitally in our, in advanced than they are at the moment. Um, they are keeping a close eye on what other countries are doing, uh, the regimes they're putting in place to uh, try and solve the tax gap or the back gap issue, um, and, and how, yeah, how successful they're being. Uh, for example, uh, Italy have introduced mandatory e-invoicing, uh, but effectively uh, every invoicing passing through their system, the government systems on their way to their final destination. Therefore, they know how much VAT should be coming their way before the VAT returns are completed by businesses. And whilst I'm not suggesting that HMRC have this in their sites, um, uh, and certainly they've said it's not at the moment. Um, they are obviously going to be keeping an eye on how successful other countries are um, and, and whether or not they've achieved uh, a reduction in their tax gap as a result. Um, and if any of the, these prove successful, uh, I'm sure that they'll be thinking about how and what other measures they can bring in place, put in place um, to reduce the UK's tax gap. So enough of me speaking for a minute, um, and uh, I thought I'd put up another question for everyone to answer. Um, which of the following do you have concerns about in respect to make the digital links for MTD? Um, and tick as many or as few as you as you like. Uh, it'd be good to understand where people are uh, potentially struggling. Mantis, it's Richard here. If I could just Hi, jump in and steal a bit of time, um, give you an opportunity to take a sip of water. Just to, to remind attendees that there is a Q&A facility. We're receiving a number of questions as we go through, so uh, feel free, please, to continue to submit questions which Matt can take towards the end of the seminar. Uh, thanks very much, Matt. Thank you, Richard. Um, I'll just click on uh, and see what we're looking at, um, yes, I think, I think uh, you know this mirrors, um, you know, some of the research we've done done before. Uh, amendments and error corrections uh, always a, a critical one there. To making sure that we can comply with digital links, um, and you know, a special special uh, calculation methods, fuel scale charges, pass exemption, uh, which is not necessarily very well catered for within our finance systems. Uh, always. Uh, cause us uh, potential issues as, again, consolidating group entities and making sure that each of our entities are compliant before we get to the final stage of the VAT return. So thank you for answering that. Um, I, just because I, I feel like it, um, I'm going to give you another question if, I, if you'd like to answer that. That'd be great. Um, so do you think uh, under the, the current circumstances, HMRC are going to be a little bit harsher on us going forward? Um, given that uh, the uh, the 
pressures that they're going to be under um, to try and recoup some of the money that's being spent at the moment uh, by the government. Now, I don't necessarily want to predict the answers, but I think I might know where this one's going to head. Um, okay, yeah, and, and as predicted, 75% of us think uh, that they are going to be less less tolerant, let's say, um, when it comes to digital links and their expectations for, for, for compliance. Um, so, uh, moving on quickly, uh, does this mean that we should be buying software or having software to comply with our digital links? Now, uh, obviously, I'm going to say yes, um, but spreadsheets can be compliant, but they do have the limitations and risks, so therefore, dedicated software can help, but what should it do? I mean, most importantly, it should provide us control over the preparation and the calculation of our back returns and the management of them at all. It should give us the complete visibility of, of our past uh, and future liabilities and obligations, along with the payments and, and liabilities that we've made or are due. It should be able to hand, handle complex calculations, automating them, saving us time and increasing accuracy. It should allow us to make uh, adjustments and amendments to our VAT returns within a, a closed digital linked uh, MTD compliant manner. It should hopefully and preferably keep up with tax legislation and be pre-coded uh, to make sure that we're kept up to date with any regulatory changes. Um, it should mitigate uh, the risks associated with our spreadsheets and our spreadsheet-based processes, giving, uh, you know, providing automated transfer of data. Um, we should be able to map our data directly from accounting systems or our, our reports. Um, and it should provide us with the ability to verify, check for errors and make um, the necessary amendments whilst creating a full end-to-end -end digital audit trail. So what's next for the industry? Um, well, as we saw again, uh, that we mentioned earlier, uh, data is a particular issue for people and our confidence is not high that it's correct. Therefore, when, if looking at a compliance solution, um, we, have, we need to have built-in functionality to address this by introducing checks against the data uh, as it comes through to enable us to make whatever remedial action we need to make uh, and have that fully digitally audit trailed uh, within, a, within a closed so solution and to make, make sure that HMRC can see exactly what's actually happened should they need to come and audit. We should be looking for advanced features. So software has the ability to provide visibility and analysis over our VAT returns and the granular data, uh, data that's contained within it. So we can start looking at trends, looking at uh, where things don't necessarily look quite right um, to give us the opportunity to go back and have a look through to see where if anything's crept through that is not quite right. As time goes on, we can expect taxes to become more and more automated. Um, and certainly from our survey results, there is a desire for that to happen. But expert software can share in the heavy lifting uh, in terms of our current dependencies that we tend to have on our internal IT uh, resources. I and mean, typically, um, if you need a change um, in your finance system to take care of VA, something to do with VAT, um, it needs to be scheduled along with other business critical processes uh, within their, uh, their, their long-term roadmaps that they tend to have. Um, and they're often stretched, uh, whereas dedicated software tends to be more self-service, uh, giving users configuration options, keeping uh, legislation up to date, um, and can actually make the necessary changes uh, themselves uh, within the, the tax team or finance teams rather than relying on our uh, poor old IT people. 
Um, and again, most of all, uh, it provides some future proofing. Um, you know, specialist compliance software will be gearing up to cope with whatever comes next um, in the world of MTD. We know that it's going to be extended to other taxes um, uh, with uh, income tax and CT uh, in the uh, nearish future. Um, but we also expect more on BAT. Um, you know, the, the, the first three stages we're at at the moment is just the start. Um, there will be more requirements at some stage. We don't know when. Um, but more and more information will be required with your VAT return over time, I suspect, uh, uh, to, to show how you got to the nine boxes on the front of the VAT return, uh, rather than just providing the summary nine boxes. Uh, HMRC, again, in my experience, have always uh, desired transaction listings uh, when it comes to, to, to with long return and, and have actually requested that uh, formally from a number of organisations I know of um, because they want to see how you got to the numbers rather than just being provided with the numbers. So I'm um, looking to the future again. Um, uh, I'll give you a little few predictions. Um, it is likely, well, an MTD has the ability to give HMRC what they're looking for, which is the potential to drive down uh, the errors and mistakes within that return processes and giving them better comfort uh, over the, the, the numbers that they're receiving and the VAT they're, they're collecting. Um, and uh, it will reduce the VAT gap in the long term. I think businesses are going to be increasingly encouraged to prove through the technology uh, given that they, they've built a platform that are going to allow this to happen, uh, to prove how they got to the nine boxes of the VAT return. Uh, it won't be enough just to submit, um, but it'll be, it, we will end up having to prove that we've done it right. Um, data is already a challenge, uh, but automation should free up to more time to be able to dedicate to cleansing data to ensure accuracy. And in the very near future, I expect uh, just some basic checks to be put into um, so the compliance uh, platforms uh, to check for things like duplicate transactions, out of period, uh, a check of what bat rates that have been applied to transactions to look for any anomalies. Um, and this will give HMRC the comfort that you're doing and taking reasonable care over your VAT processes. and. Most importantly, you'll be able to prove that these checks take place on every VAT return um, and therefore uh, lessen the risk of being accused of not taking reasonable care uh, should any mistakes slip through. Um, other things, I think finance teams, uh, you know, as finance people, we want comfort. Uh, we need to know that um, the vast majority of us is our aim to get things right and we don't like surprises. Um, but being able to have tools that enable us to look through uh, our past periods and current periods and look at trends across um, that's often and, and can be a very time consuming process or part of the process of putting together VAT returns, um, software has the ability to instantly bring that up um, and, and so it will give us more time to um, have a look to make sure that what we're declaring is the right amount. Um, but also it gives us the, the ability to perhaps even uh, forecast what we're um, going to have to pay in the future at an earlier point. So again, giving a bit more certainty around our, our, our VAT numbers and, uh, and our budgeting. Um, so final question. Um, what are your biggest compliance challenges? Uh, again, take as many as you like. Um, what's particularly difficult in, in your business? Is it around the data collection or concerns about accuracy? Um, does the audit trail and creating those audit trails end-to-end -end, uh, make you nervous or is that there's something that's going to be easy or not possible? Um, and, uh, and, and do you have concerns about using Excel? So hopefully um, we've got some results. 
Uh, and so I'm very conscious we're running out of time. Um, yes, uh, as expected, the digital links is causing uh, uh, people some nerves, and understandably so. But thank you for answering that question. That's great insight. Um, so uh, last last one from me, uh, almost, uh, is, you know, can the right system help? What does it need to do? It can give us a powerful tool uh, to not only comply with the short term, but uh, to look at um, streamlining processes in the future. Um, I am going to skip through this one because we think we've been through it all. Uh, I want to give us the opportunity to answer a, a question or two. Um, but just to recap, uh, the current crisis has the potential to accelerate adoption of tax uh, automation. Um, we need to comply with digital links. There is going to be no leeway, uh, but we need to watch out for the pitfalls uh, and, uh, and deal with um, future complexities. Um, but thank you very much for listening, everyone. Uh, apologies, we're running close to time. But uh, Richard. OK, thanks for that. That's a fantastic tour de force there. Um, it was interesting how you talked about the tension between spreadsheets and digital links, uh, the issues with data collection and the role of software. And as you say, we do have a number of questions come in. Um, and I'm wondering if we could go in the order that they came in. So, uh, and Matt has very kindly agreed to provide, if we can get to everybody's question uh, at this session, he, he's kindly offered to follow up uh, in meeting after. So, so don't worry if you submitted a question and we get to it. But uh, Matt, if I could ask you to go down the list um, to yeah. two questions, one from James and one from Carla, um, which I think are linked. Um, but James asked, does the del delay for MTD digital links include additional time for VAT groups? And then Carla says, is deadline for VAT groups October 2021? A deadline for all businesses, so it doesn't matter whether you're a VAT group, we're part of the original deferred uh, group of businesses, is April 2021. There is no additional time for that groups over and above everyone else uh, at the moment. Okay. Well, again, Thank as you. the crisis continues, we may hear something different, but at the moment, it's April 2021 for all. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next question up from that one comes from John. Um, and he asks, will HMRC provide a solution similar to VIVE for validating GB VAT registration numbers going forward as we leave the EU? Um, I have not heard anything on this uh, at all. Um, and I know that there are particular potential challenges in uh, having a solution like that. Um, HMRC have been very protective over people's VAT numbers and, uh, and, their, their, and their details. Um, so uh, I don't know the answer to that one, I'm afraid. Um, but if I was uh, uh, speculating, I think that that's a long way off. OK, thank you. Um, next question is from Martin. Um, and he asks, while amendments and adjustments are acceptable outside, outside a closed MTD system, would it be compliant to account for reverse charges such as an adjustment? Um, I believe so, yes. Uh, again, you know, in, in calculating them, uh, you may be able to do that outside of MTD uh, and digital links as long as the, uh, the result of the calculation is transferred into the VAT return uh, digitally from the calculation. Um, but it is a requirement to digitally record those transactions that come in in the first place as part of your digital records. OK, thank you. And the question above that from Richard um, about opticians. So in the case of an optician, the calculation of sales by type of sale and between different types of sale and VAT can be done outside the software. Is it OK to do this for the whole quarter and post it as one journal so long as you link it to the spreadsheet? Um, 
in my current reading of uh, what is required without any uh, additional clarification, um, because the regulations aren't particularly clear. Um, again, when you're looking at uh, particular complex uh, calculations, um, they are still uh, permissible to do the actual calculation outside of the software, but the results need to be digitally linked in. Um, I, I have to admit, I'm not 100% uh, uh, familiar with the, all the requirements around opticians, but you know, so certainly my current thinking: if there's a particular scheme, or a particular regime, or or type of uh, back calculation um, that, that needs to be done, that can still be done outside. Okay, fantastic, thanks. And I think we probably have to have this as the last question. Um, this is from Sally that asks, what about errors found when reviewing back returns, e.g. incorrectly addressed inputs? This obviously needs to be removed. Does this need digital link and where and how might that take place? Okay, yeah, that's that's a, it's a common a common uh, issue. Um, as I say, we we all wish our data was completely clean and there were no errors uh, coming through. Um, again, it's 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 a, a fine balance in manipulating uh, the data that comes through um, and being able to to to, to maintain those digital links. Um, if it's within an MTD compliant software, those amendments can be made, time stamped, digitally audited, uh, and that's that's an acceptable way of dealing with those. Um, the other option is to actually amend the data, uh, up, uh, go back and amend the data and re-upload uh, your data with the, the, the corrections in place, which doesn't necessarily fit in with ideally with the processes you would use uh, to do your back return. Um, uh, and also can add a considerable amount of time to the process. Okay, Matt, that's fantastic. I think we're pretty much at time. So it just gives me to thank you for attending this webinar. We hope that you found it informative. And I would like to thank Matt for his insight and advice. And I would also like to thank you, our listeners, for your time and for your questions. You will be notified when a recording of this webinar has been made available to view. Please tell us what you think and let us know how useful you have found the webinar by completing the short survey after the webinar has finished. If you think there are other areas it would be useful for us to cover, please let us know. But for now, thank you and bye.